Oh god. Neon effect. Oh my god. This one does have a seal. God, it's so hard to get the seal. Fuck. <laughs> so slippery. Oh. Oh, wow. Before we get into the test results, I just wanted to make a disclaimer that basically I looked up what kind of test I actually did after I did the test. So I did no research, did the test, and then looked up what test I actually just performed. Basically, we did a flexural strength test, which is measured using the three-point bending test. Flexural strength and tensile strength are technically almost the same thing in a perfect world. I'll try to illustrate the difference. Normally in a tensile strength test, you have one side mounted and the other side is pulling. So it pulls straight up ugh, and then it breaks at some arbitrary value. The three point bending test is different because one side is pushing down or pulling up. There's a lot more stress on the top side and the bottom side when you're bending. The top side is bending and the bottom side is bending. As opposed to if you're pulling straight up, there's an even distribution force across the material. Is what Wikipedia said. Another error that I made was I didn't control for the amount of force I was using to snap these objects. Force equals mass times acceleration so i forgot to control for acceleration so we have no clue how much acceleration i use so in a scientific setting you could probably just invalidate the entire test i also only used a sample size of six per material which is just a small sample size so that's also just terrible testing technique so basically with these values here they're completely arbitrary because we don't know how much acceleration i used I would say they do give you a sort of comparative picture within the sample group. Even though in a technical sense or in a situation where you would need to rate these for different applications, these numbers would be meaningless and useless. Like you couldn't say this resin will sit, stand up to X amount of force because we have no idea. I mean these I used a fish scale to measure those So I just wanted to get that out of the way and explain that I do think we can make a lot of qualitative Assessments based on test blanks because you can just bend them and be like, oh, this one's pretty sturdy So we're gonna do a lot of that. All right to kick off these results I'm gonna start with the worst performing resins things. I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole all right first on the list for the worst resins I have out of the eight here is the Elgu ABS like photopolymer resin. This stuff is terrible. I don't know what you would use it for. It's only redeeming quality is that it is crack resistant. I mean, it is slightly flexible. I mean, it's pretty flexible, but it is brittle once you bend it a few times. $34 on the Elgu site, which means, I mean, it's not cheap stuff and it has a six second exposure time. What is that? I will not be buying this ever again. Next we have the Anycubic Tough. This stuff is pretty strong. It prints nice and it has a good color to it. It's slightly durable. I mean, you can bend it a bunch before it starts to break. But at $50 and not many discounts, it's you're not getting a lot, a lot of value for this. I mean, it's, it's super expensive. $50 for this bottle, I mean, it is strong stuff, but the value proposition here is way less than some of these other ones that we re reviewed. Last on the list, we have the liquid rubber. I mean, F69, this stuff is crazy, but it's, it's very expensive, it's smelly, and it's hard to support it just because it's so flexible. I don't think this stuff is terrible. This stuff definitely has a niche. It's $75, $76 on Amazon, and it's more expensive on their website. But it did, it was our most bendy material. So, I mean, you could use this stuff for a lot of different things. I actually made a 3D printed disc golf disc with this stuff. So, I, I can't say this stuff is useless. I mean, it is crazy, a crazy printing material. 
you can make rubber tires and stuff but it's expensive next on the list we have our mid-tier performers these ones offer a pretty decent value but they're not the best value let's start off with the i form 182 i think this stuff is actually pretty good uh you can actually go on their website and get this same bottle for 32.99 and it's 34.99 on amazon it was very easy to print with the only drawback i see with it is the bottle is weird and it's got a weird cap that's hard to pull off which is like a slight inconvenience the color is super vibrant on this stuff you poured super white and it printed out super white and it's got a nice uh flexural strength to it and it's very rigid so you could create some very good functional parts with this stuff i mean you have to work pretty hard to break it and at 32.99 for a kilogram this is some of the best performance to price value you're going to get out there next we have the epax hard this stuff has its own niche this is actually the first 3d printing resin i used this was the first resin printer i actually bought which was this mammoth epax so they advertise this stuff as good for large format 3d printers i think the reason why is this stuff it's called epax hard for a reason it does not like to flex when you print this stuff out the supports are going to be super rigid when the build plates moving up and down you're not going to get any wobble normally it's 41.99 at one kilogram but if you buy six kilograms on their website it brings the price down to 38 dollars per kilogram so not crazy value but it is i would just say it's reliable and i've used it a lot so i can't really hate on it i mean it's got a special place in my heart all right so these last three are the best of the best uh the ones i was most surprised with that i think offer the best value probably out there right now first off let's start with the sunlu i would give this one the title of best overall value one drawback though it discolors a little bit which is weird the bottle is the best bottle out of all of these i i for some reason i love this bottle i'm just super hype on the bottle i guess at 9.3 pounds it was our lowest performing test right but when you try to break this stuff it is very rigid right see it's, it's hard to break it on their website you can get it for 22 dollars a bottle if you buy five kilograms of it which is an amazing deal for the price if if you don't want to spend 110 dollars on five kilograms of it if you don't need that much and you have a smaller printer I would say the I form is probably what you should go for. The Sunlu and the I form actually performed very similarly, I thought. The Sunlu is at $22 and the I form is at $33. Best value by far, Sunlu. Next on the list, we have the infamous Tenacious by Sorayatek. I've used Sorayatek Blue as well. I can say this stuff is always good. There's a lot of other videos online about Sarai Tech and Sarai Tech Blue. I can say that this stuff definitely does live up to the hype. I mean, it's some good stuff. This one, I would say you get the best bend for your buck, meaning this stuff is durable. You could f sit here and flex this all day, you know, and it's not going to break on you. One drawback is you need to clean it thoroughly because it is a more viscous resin. So you got to use either a higher percentage IPA bath or longer in the IPA. It's got a very nice smell to it. I think they add something so it smells good. Had our second highest flexural strength test at 25 pounds. So comparable to the F69. And if you buy five kilograms of it on their website, you can get it for $53. So I think this stuff could potentially be used as some sort of additive, potentially for the Sunlu. Say you add 10% tenacious to the Sunlu, you bring that 9.3 pounds up to 11 or so pounds so you get a more durable product still spendy at 53 dollars but i definitely think it's worth it one of the best ones i tested all right and last but farthest from least this is my favorite one that i tested and i'm actually blown away with this stuff 
This is the Sunlu PA or nylon type resin. This gives you the best functional value for your dollar. Online, you can get this same stuff in there in this bottle, which is awesome because I love that bottle. It's got a very nice matte finish to it. It almost looks exactly like an injection molded part. I'm gonna say it. 11.2 pounds makes this stuff rigid and durable. It is extremely hard to break this stuff. Definitely gives you some nice properties that you could ah, use to create some sort of product. And I would like to say I'm not sponsored by Sunlu or anything. I just think they're, after testing all these resins, they're kicking ass and they're giving you good value for your money, which resin 3D printing is definitely not cheap to begin with, but I think the prices are starting to come down a little bit on stuff like this so i love to see this so on their website you can get it for 32.80 if you buy five kilograms of it otherwise it's 50 dollars. but that is a pretty big savings 32.80 for this stuff i might be using this in all of my functional prints because it's just awesome to print with it cleaned very easily um it comes in the nice bottle this is my favorite stuff again i'm not sponsored by these guys i'm just blown away by it Ugh. Oh my fucking it does it does not like to break. 